New at 7, WHO provides major update on timeline for rollout of vaccines under COVAX facility. Fresh data provided showing impact of COVID-19 fallout on the country's hotel sector. Timeline provided for Weox cheers to be offered for sale to the public. And veteran Antiguan and Barbudan diplomat Sir Ronald Sanders named the high-level committee to examine Commonwealth studies at the University of London. The details right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Andy Libra. Thank you so much for joining us as well. And we begin our newscast this way. Antigua and Barbuda is expecting to access uh, COVID-19 vaccine through the World Health Organization's uh, COVAX facility. That's right, Andy. The World Health Organization, WHO, says it could begin distributing vaccines as early as next month. And we have strong confidence that we should be able to be vaccinating in February in these countries. And we're doing everything possible to make sure in as many countries as possible. But we cannot do that on our own. The WHO says cooperation with vaccine manufacturers and financiers is crucial going forward. Now, the country's, uh, country's preparedness to receive and distribute the vaccines also plays a crucial role as well. Every country does have to make a plan uh, and start to execute the plan uh, for uh, assuring that there is capacity within the cold chain to handle the influx of the vaccines and safety monitoring um, of the administration of the vaccines uh, as we've assured um, and continue to emphasize that every vaccine program has a safety monitoring system. Now, the WHO also recommends an efficient database be created to ensure people are called back for the second doses of vaccine. Meanwhile, there is information this evening of another new variant of SARS-CoV-2, the virus which causes COVID-19. The revelation came today from Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. Over the weekend, WHO was notified by Japan about a new variant of the virus. The more the virus spreads, the higher the chance of new changes to the virus. Most notably, transmissibility of some variants of the virus appears to be increasing. There have, of course, been other variants identified in the UK and South Africa. He says at present, the new variants do not seem to show increased severity of disease. Dr. Tedros is urging everyone to follow the public health basics now more than ever, even as he says significant work is being done by scientists. What's most critical is that we sequence the virus effectively so we know how it's changing and how to respond. For example, while diagnostics and vaccines still seem to be effective against the current virus, we may need to tweak them in the future. Meantime, the health ministry here in Antigua and Barbuda says the country's COVID-19 case count remains at 176, with 19 active cases, as no new reports were received from the Mount St. John's Medical Center, or CAFA, as at 6 p.m. on Sunday. The latest dashboard shows the number of those tested has now crossed the 7,000 mark, where the 7,046 people now tested. 362 people are now in self-quarantine and 22 in government quarantine facilities. Of the 176 cases recorded since the start of the pandemic on March 13th last year, 107 have been imported and the other 69 have been non-imported. Well, meanwhile, the experimental vaccines deployed to end the COVID-19 pandemic may also defeat other illnesses. So does humanity dare to hope for a new dawn in the treatment of maladies which have caused untold misery and death over many years? ABS's Jamie J. Roche looks at how scientists could use messenger RNA or mRNA to treat cancer, which kills close to 10 million people every year. The vaccines created by Moderna Incorporated and BioNTech SE and its partner Pfizer Incorporated use the messenger RNA technique. 
these new generation vaccines instruct the body to make viral proteins. The immune system then attacks these antigens, practicing for the day when the same proteins show up with the coronavirus attached. Since mRNA can tell the body's cells what proteins to make, it can create antigens for many diseases. Scientists look at the amino acid sequence, then derive the precise instructions the mRNA must give to make the protein they need. This process can be relatively fast, which is why scientists created the COVID-19 vaccine in record time. To kill a cancerous tumor, doctors usually zap it with radiation or chemicals, damaging lots of other tissue in the process. mRNA-based cancer treatments could treat each tumor as genetically unique and train individual patients' immune systems against that specific enemy. So scientists find the antigen, get its fingerprint, reverse engineer the cellular instructions to target the culprit, and let the body do the rest. Moderna and BioNTech are currently in drug trials for treating cancers of the breast, prostate, skin, pancreas, brain, lung, and other tissues. They're also working on vaccines for several disorders, including influenza, Zika, and rabies. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. Now, there's another indication this evening of the toll taken on the crucial tourism industry by followed from the COVID-19 pandemic. Fresh figures from the Antigua Barbados Hotels and Tourism Association show the level of dislocation for hoteliers in 2020 as the restrictions around the world limited travel. In June last year, only eight hotels were open with average occupancy of 30% in the height of the lockdown. September saw the highest occupancy levels of only 45% among the 11 properties open. Now, Executive Director of the Antigua and Barbuda Hotels and Tourism Association, Patrice Christian Simon says, despite the education systems and protocols training implemented, it was a tough year. So we're talking about drastic numbers when we look at all of the hotel rooms we have on Antigua and Barbuda and what the real occupancy um, could have been. Um, we, we have not, um, we have struggled through the year. There were some glimmers of hope. Uh, towards the end of the year, but we all understand where we are and what has brought us to this point. And right now, we're just looking ahead to 2021 and making the adjustments that we need to really try to survive through this year. She says the picture is dire when compared to figures for 2019. Kristen Simon further clarifies, if the figures were to be applied to all beds, inclusive of the hotels, which remain closed, the information would be frightening. I'm actually giving the average occupancies based on those hotels that were open. But if I compare it to what should have transpired, let's say we had all of the hotels open that year. So for, for instance, for November, we had 22 properties reporting at 33%. If all properties, if I compare it to last year, we really only performed at 5.3%. Mm. In October, 26 properties at 43%. If I match it against what should have happened, we're really talking about 4.7%. So we're talking about drastic numbers when we look at all of the hotel rooms we have on Antigua and Barbuda and what the real occupancy um, could have been. Uh, staying with that development, as we now go over to the United Kingdom, more indications this evening that the lockdown in parts of the UK is hurting this country's tourism sector. Antigua and Barbuda's Director of Tourism for the UK and Europe, Sherry Osborne, provides an update to ABS about the impact on arrivals. Currently, we're not quite sure when this uh, national lockdown will be lifted. Currently, they're stating the it will be reviewed on the 15th of February. But this morning, we had an update from the Chief Medical Officer um, here in the UK, who um, advised that... Uh, the, the situation here is not improving and um, we are estimating that this national lockdown will not be lifted before March or April this year. Now, the UK market is Antigua and Barbuda's second most important source market for tourists behind the United States. Osborne says the effect on flights has been almost instantaneous, but there is a glimmer of hope. Um, on the plus side, 
compared to the first and possibly the second lockdown, the flights will be continuing. So Virgin has said to us that they'll be flying twice uh, per week and, and British Airways will be scaling down to three flights per week. Obviously, this is subject to, to change. She outlines there are also changes for those arriving in the UK as that country has now insisted on a negative COVID-19 test for entry into their ports. The UK is now implementing uh, testing for all arriving passengers into the UK. So from this Thursday, every passenger arriving into the UK will require a negative uh, uh, test result taken no more than 72 hours prior to, to travel, or they can face a £500 fine. The latest now on a developing story we've been tracking. The government will sell a portion of its shares in West Indies oil company Weok to private Antiguan and Barbadian investors by the end of February this year. The timeline has been revealed by Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Gaston Brown, who says the company will launch a public education campaign this week. They will educate individuals on the sale of the shares, how they can access the shares, where they can purchase and so on, and who the broker dealers are. Now, the Prime Minister says WIOC have posted profits of about $26 million at the end of 2019 and hoped to produce $30 million in profits in 2020. He says the 2020 profit, though, was likely, uh, likely lower due to the pandemic. The company has the capacity to make uh, profits of about $30 million and more, which means that investors will be able to get a sustainable return. And now another major development. Prime Minister Gaston Brown says he is considering legislative changes on when parliamentarians become pensionable. ABS's Jessica Russell reports. On the basis that we have had to increase the age for all public servants, then we have to increase the age for the parliamentarians for their eligibility to draw a pension. So perhaps up to 55 or 60. In 2019, Parliament passed a bill to increase the retirement age for civil servants from 60 to 65. Last year, legislation was also passed to move the pension age for police officers to that age. But former parliamentarians can currently access a pension at 50. A man may come in just before an election, a year or two before an election, wins a seat. Then he serves for five more years and he wins a second time. So his total contribution to the public sector would have been maybe about six, seven years. And he ends up getting a pension from age 50. There's something fundamentally wrong about that. Prime Minister Brown says the current legislation can result in people entering politics simply for the benefits. If you're not committed and you're opportunistic, all you'll do is try and get the two terms, which could even happen within a seven-year period, get your full pension, and then, um, you know, just turn your back, your back on the people. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Thank you very much, Jessica. Prime Minister Brown was speaking on his weekend radio program on Point FM. One more of the stories that we're tracking for you upcoming right after the break. You're watching the ABS Evening News here on ABS, the region's news leader. Still to come in this news conference. And Tegan Barbados, top diplomat in Washington, Sir Ronald Sanders, named to a high-level committee by University of London. And later on, early months in Green Bay. Tell about the details and what we know of the latest upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online service. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. It's not easy getting rid of these types of greases every day. It's hard work. But if you really think about it, it's not really us doing the cleaning. At Total Import Supplies, we believe it's all about the product. Our extensive new line of ChemClean products are extremely concentrated, eco-friendly, effective, and guaranteed to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're cleaning at home, the office, or at industrial-type spaces, when it comes to food-based solvents, sanitizers, cleaners, floor care, commercial machines, and dispensers for laundry care, let the product do most of the work for you. Introducing the best brands in the cleaning business from ChemClean limited available only from total import supplies
Welcome back. Antigua and the Barbados Ambassador to the United States, Sir Ronald Sanders, has been named to a committee which will conduct an inquiry into the future of Commonwealth studies at the University of London. The veteran diplomat is among the 10-member committee to be chaired by Sir Malcolm Rifkind, a former Defence and Foreign and Commonwealth Secretary of the British Government. The announcement of the committee members was made today by the university's Vice Chancellor, Professor Wendy Thompson. Sir Ronald has been involved in Commonwealth matters in various capacities since 1982. He has expressed this, his delight at serving on this committee. The veteran diplomat is quoted as saying, the Commonwealth has been a significant actor in world politics, for instance, in ending apartheid in South Africa. Because of its diverse membership, it has the capacity to help the world negotiate solutions to global problems. He therefore says Commonwealth studies are important to university teaching and research. The committee is expected to take evidence from across the Commonwealth and submit its report and recommendations by June this year. And now this, the man accused by the police of incidents of crime in the villa, Point and Gambles, during the Christmas and New Year holidays is now behind the bars. 24-year-old Carson Matthew Jr. of Fort Road made his first court appearance before Chief Magistrate Joan Walsh in the St. John's Magistrate's Court today. The Chief Magistrate has remanded the accused to the prison ahead of his next court appearance on March 24th. Matthew is accused of a spate of break-ins and robberies between Christmas Eve and New Year's Day. Police apprehended the defendant in the Point community last Wednesday after a wanted bulletin was issued for his arrest. He was charged with housebreaking and larceny Thursday and allegedly escaped from a holding cell at St. John's Police Station the next day. Police say they recaptured the man at Bennett Street in the villa at around 2.45 Saturday afternoon. Investigators have since charged the accused with escaping lawful custody. Meantime, police have charged 22-year-old Darius Williams of Potters with breaking and larceny. Investigators have accused him of breaking into a building on Long Street and stealing alcoholic beverages, two electrical transformers, a water pump, an undisclosed sum of money, and several other items. Police jointly charged him with 41-year-old Melinda Thomas of All Saints. The alleged offense occurred sometime between November 30th and December 1st last year. Williams, who was the subject of a wanted bulletin, surrendered to police last Friday. Well, this development now on a 30 by 90 foot wooden structure was completely destroyed by fire on George Street in Green Bay early Monday morning. Uh, what you're seeing now is cell phone video obtained by our newsroom showing the blaze and its aftermath. Firefighters responded to the call at 6.05. However, they were unable to save the structure or its contents. Among the contents lost in the blaze, passports and electoral identification. The property is uh, also uninsured. Information received by the St. John's Fire Station suggests the fire began at the front portion of the structure, which is regularly used as a bar. The bar area, which has access to electricity, was not in use at the time of the fire. No one was injured in the blaze, fortunately. It's becoming quite a positive trend. The owners of Sheba's Creations recently shared their products with the Prime Minister Gaston Brown at his office. Naomi Joseph and Ed Darrow own Sheba's Creation, which is a hot sauce company. We sell the peppers locally. The fruits are mostly local. What we don't get here, we, in, we get from Dominica. Mm -hmm. um, our labels are done locally. And the Prime Minister, after sampling one of the six flavors available, says by his account, the product lives up to its name. Uh, but uh, let me commend you, uh, both of you. Uh, I have to admit that um, this is easily one of the um, hottest um, pepper sauce that I've had. Mm -hmm. And it is truly in keeping with its name, Hot Lakawa. Uh, Prime Minister Brown, who's been an advocate for entrepreneurship, says uh, the Entrepreneurial Development Fund is willing to support the company's growth. Mr. Arnold, the Department of Culture has a number of initiatives to be rolled out in short order. Director of Culture, Ken Cordes, says the Secondary School's National Theatre Festival is earmarked for March. There's a dance component and then there's also the drama component that will cover uh, five different categories. It's going to be a little different this year because of our situation on the ground. 
uh, they're going to be more solo performances than they are group performances. As it relates to major events such as Carnival 2021 and Carry Festa 2022, Cordis tells ABS discussions are progressing. Now we, of course, we will keep you updated as more dis details become available on these ongoing, unfolding, developing matters, Andy. All right, indeed. Coming up, still to come, news from overseas, including another sharp rise in COVID-19 cases. Before oh. we go on to that, Andy, let's tell you that on a programming note, coming okay. up tomorrow morning, Antigua Barbuda today is absolutely unmissable. You wouldn't want to miss the program. In fact, this evening, we're not even going to tell you who are some of the guests ah. because we <laughs> want you to tune in. We assure you it will be immensely worth your while. That's Antigua Barbuda today, tomorrow morning, absolutely unmissable. All right, now we can go on to some news overseas. All right, overseas thank you now. very much. <laughs> Still to come news from overseas, including another sharp rise in COVID-19 cases over the weekend in Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and St. Lucia. And internationally, Democrats in the U.S. Congress ratchet up the pressure on embattled President Donald Trump as they seek to impeach him for a second time. We'll tell you about that story upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Stay with us.